Not really to any significant Nothing. degree, except there is a change in women postmenopause. Uh, you know, uric acid is contributed to by what are called purines. They're the breakdown products of DNA and RNA. And it turns out that two thirds of those purines actually don't come from our foods. They come from our own breakdown of our own tissues when we go about our daily lives and certainly uh, when we exercise and especially if we exercise aggressively and do things like lifting weights. We're breaking down muscle tissue in that instance and that liberates some of those purines can raise uric acid. As we age, we have less muscle mass, for example, and that might explain why there's not a real dramatic increase in uric acid as we age, except in women postmenopause. And the reason for that is that estrogen, which is certainly higher premenopause, uh, helps the body rid itself of uric acid. So premenopausal women have a, a pretty uh, good control over their uric acids. Uh, but, you know, these days with all the, the uh, fructose consumption in beverages, in the fruit juice, et cetera, we see a lot of elevation of uric acid. And interestingly, when uh, there is a, a clinical situation in which women have more testosterone than they should and less estrogen, we call this PCOS, a polycystic ovarian syndrome, they get high uric acid. So, uh, you know, here is a really good metric that we can follow ultimately to inform us as to how effective we are at reestablishing hormone balance in women with this very pervasive disorder, PCOS, the number one cause of infertility here in America. So um, women generally have an advantage earlier on, but then, you know, the tables get leveled uh, later in life.